Amber and Diane Ward are here. All right, so just got to get this recording thing going because I'm going to record to the cloud because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. All right. Hello. Good evening, everyone. I hope we're all doing really well. I hope we're all doing well and everything. You're probably wondering, where is Marissa? Well, Marissa covered for me on Wednesday, which is one of the sweetest things anyone could ever do, along with Ron Mark Thompson, which I can't thank the both of them enough for what they have done. Um, both of them incredible, incredible individuals. Definitely go shout out to both of them. You can follow Ron Mark Thompson at um, Bronx Art and Fun Hub. That's B-X-A-F. That's his organization. He's also part of the Word is Right. He's going to be doing um, workshops every other Wednesday. That is not my open mic and everything. So you'll be definitely seeing a lot more of Ron and obviously Marissa Prada can follow her at Prada Painting and Poetry. Um, we got, um, she also has um, The Word is Right and Red or Green Books. So definitely go check out Red or Green Books too as well for the next 10 that are here like myself and everything. Um, it's great for everyone to be here tonight. Um, the room is, a, uh, you know, we're getting some people in here and everything. We're going to be, you know, doing well and everything. Amber Dragala is here, whom I haven't heard from in quite some time. I'm sure Word Gorilla will be here soon. We'll be taking names down for our open mic list really, really soon. Diane Ward is here. Chanson is here. Nancy is here. I'm glad that you're all here on a Saturday night. If you haven't checked out who Amber Dragala is, Amber is freaking amazing. Such a powerhouse of a poet, such an amazing person too as well. Thomas Connor is also in the waiting room and he'll be joining up very soon and he is here right now. I'm sure Thomas is like, what are you doing? And you're like, what is there's Marissa? Ah, I'm here. <laughs> it's me. I hijacked. No, I'm kidding. I didn't hijack. I actually just uh, um, holding it down until Marissa can get herself over here. Um, she is right now with Poet Con. And uh, uh, what was it? And um, uh, and Kemlin Bappy right now. So she went out to go visit and everything where Kemlin is and everything. So let's take some names down for this list and everything. So it is pretty short. It's a very small room as of now. Um, let's try to keep it about three, four minutes. I don't know how Marissa does. I guess three, four minutes and everything kind of um, is how she does so we'll do that and everything too if you want to hop on this drop your name in the chat um so a little quick plug right over here for the word is right because we have some events coming up so if you can't make it this saturday for whatever reason oh it's okay you know i mean it's uh we have amber dragala and uh word gorilla right here is the features next saturday's features Diane Ward, who's in the room right now. The ever so lovely Diane Ward, who I've had the chance to meet and spit poetry with, and yet to uh, have, have yet to um, break bread with uh, Diane, but it's all good. It's all good. We'll, we'll get to that at some point and everything. I'm sure that there'll be some event coming up next Saturday. Maybe we could, you know, maybe I could run into you there and everything with a certain advocate of words. <laughs> Um, it's Diane Ward and Ashley Edwards, who is a part of the next 10 right there. So um, I highly recommend checking out both Diane Ward and um, uh, Ashley Edwards, too, as well. Also, the following Saturday will be the Cash Slam right there on August 2nd. August 9th, we have um, Sam Park and Mary Blenderman, who I am so happy about. It's my mom's birthday, but I don't know what's going on for that. So, you know, happy birthday, Mama Dukes right there. You know, I got to celebrate with mom and everything. But if I can make it over there, I will definitely try to make it over there. It just depends on mom's birthday. Then the following Saturday is another great double feature. Daniel Villegas and Edie Black. Get to see the blackbird fly right there and uh, and both of them are incredible i've heard uh um david on here for edith multiple places y'all are not ready for both of those 
And the 23rd is to be determined as of right now and everything. So, um, Diane, I see that I see what you're, what you're saying over there. I don't know where work gorilla is. So we're going to kind of like get this, uh, mic started. This is a safe space, you know, please respect others. You know, don't get cute or you get the boot, uh, get the boot like Ray Jane said. So I'm going to paraphrase what Ray Jane said right there. Cause I just love that. <laughs> and um um you know you, you, your work is protected umbrella of content warning you know for everyone you don't need to say content warning if you need to i champion that and i'm with you 100 percent. if you do hate speech get this look the upset look of nick p you get booted do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars <laughs> so with that being said welcome everyone to the word is right i hope everyone is in this space of mine you know happy and everything i see you amber it's been such a long time since i last seen you you look amazing um it's great to see you again thomas it's also great to see you too. I got the chance to break bread and spit poetry with Thomas Connor. And then Thomas is just as cool as he is in the mic as he is in person too. So just as cool and everything. So let's get started. I think we should hear some poetry, kind of like get this uh, room started and everything like that. Um, so let's get into it. So everyone, everyone is aware, I do have a book that's going to be coming out. So um, we're going to get right on into it and everything. Um, Dane Ince is here. I haven't seen Dane Ince in quite some time. And Karma is also entering the room. But I figured I, I'm in the mood for a, uh, a little treat, you know, for you all. I'm going to do a piece that's going to be from my book that I don't think I've ever done before. So I'm going to do a piece. I think that uh, this is a, a piece I don't think I've ever done before for my book, Adverses Reaction, which will be out with red or green books, which if you all want to, uh, you know, get a, hold, get a hold of that, you know, go to redorgreenbooks.com and come see that and everything. Um, I'll do that one and I'll do another one because it's a shorty piece. So this first one's called Every Day. And this is going to be in my book. Every day, they want you to be also. They want you to be, they want you to be ignorant. Show them the other side. Show them kindness. Show them love. Show them humility. Show them that you care. Even if they don't love you, they will. They will learn of the stories of your book for you, for us. So that was one. And the second one that I'm going to do is kind of one that I'm feeling right now because I'm feeling a little bit in the, let's just say I'm in the sort of a Robert Smith phase and everything like that, you know? So um, I'm in sort of like a Robert Smith mood. Um, everyone who doesn't know, that's the cure. Um, because, um, I had to bury my grandma over this, um, this past, um, Thursday and that was not fun. Would not recommend. Um, my grandma did live a long life, a long 96 years, but you know, I'm kind of feeling this bone cause I wrote this, um, a couple weeks ago or about a week ago. Cause this, uh, this just reminds me of it. This one's called healing angelic vision. I heard an angelic voice today. I smelled your usual odor. I sensed your presence without a puff of spells, without intoxicating alchemy. I know you are okay. In a place of penance withheld are the penalty sins. You walked on the edges of arrows just to give me a touch of your light. You spoke to me in object. You told me to reject, eject the sorrow, fly like the blackbird in Gulf Phoenix where I put, when I put my pen down, I found a broken altar and tattered robes. I took those robes, wore them, felt for holes and patches. 
I'm not a soul reaper. I'm grim reaped of seeds that psyched out wounds, wounds that are still healing. Taste of heaven today. I'm grieved again. I will walk along the edges just like you did. Build these angel wings out of flames and ice until I fly like the phoenix while falling in love with my ashes. And that's how we're going to start this night tonight. All right. I hope everyone's doing well. Word Gorilla has just popped into the room. Uh, Marissa Prada is also here, but she stepped away for a second. So let's see who wants to hop on this mic, because I have to kind of do my thing right over here. Um, you know, I do appreciate all the kind words and everyone is put in the chat and everything. Um, so let's get started with Chance on, because Chance on's name is the uh, one that I see uh, in the uh, in the uh, chat right now. So we're gonna get started with Chance on. If anyone else wants on this mic, please drop your name in the chat. I would love to hear what you all have to say and everything. Um, let's go to Chance on first. Chance on. Yes, sir. It's been a minute since I last seen you. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> Literally a minute ago or something like that, because we were at Haven earlier, and you're yeah. hosting that, and now it's like, I'm hosting this, so it's like, it's going to be cool as hell. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. I just wrote a poem about, um, well, it's, it was inspired by all of, all of the murders that have taken place here in Baltimore. Um, so here we go. Social distancing is in effect. The spiritual distancing was in effect forever. Bullets fly through the air like the bursting bombs at Fort McHenry in 1812. With the flying bullets come fallen bodies, wounded or killed. Sirens blare in the distance. Mothers and sisters wail in sorrow. Fathers and brothers seek revenge. Curse wheels roll. Grieving families drape themselves in black as they stand for the last time over their loved ones in the place where all people come to rest all because some fool failed to be their brother's or sister's keeper. The price of life has depreciated. The mission of hate is to steal, kill, and destroy. Let us give love a try. Let us live life living more abundantly. And then here are two hakus. Ink, our color. Ethnic groups, tertiary. Our race, human. Haku. Poetry needed. All people can use kind words. Let's just be sincere. Thank you. Awesome job, Chanson. Thank you. You missed our call this morning. I, yeah, I didn't know we had one. <laughs> we didn't have one. We were just calling you because oh. we were hanging out at the pool. I'm actually oh. in Poet Khan's house right now. No. I'm, I'm with PoetCon inside Kemlin's house right now. And it's just so much fun. We drove, we drove to Arizona and uh, the, they're actually getting ice cream for the kids right now. Uh, so they'll pop on, I, I, I'm sure. It's, it's so surreal, all these poets together. <laughs> and we actually had planned to do like a physical mic stand and do poetry, but we ran out of time. We're running late today, but yeah. Thank you so much, Nick, for opening. You know what, Marissa, I got your back. I'm like, listen, you know, I got you covered for me the other day. And then you put <laughs> you and Ron Mark Thompson both put poetry all over my space on Wednesday. So it's my turn to kind of repay the favor back over here. So myself and Chance on got this whole thing started right over here for oh you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you guys so much. Are you all excited for our freaking features? Do you know who's here to die? Oh my God! It's Amber Dragal. Amber Why? If, if y'all don't know who these poets are, this is why. And if Nick, if you're able to go live to get them live, that would be amazing. Um, it's, it is live, actually. So you are. We are live. I checked my thing. Um, it's live. I think I put it to the word is right. So I think you should be good to go and everything with that. So I was able to get that. I just had to record that to the cloud because I didn't know how long I was going to be here for because I have to get going pretty soon because I'm running a little late myself to a party. <laughs> I was supposed to go to a food truck festival, but I took a nap and I'm like, crap, it's 630. Ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry, I'm my day right there. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, um, I don't have my phone on me because Isa has it. So I'll try to kind of keep track a little bit on time today. Uh, so far, it was just Chanson who wants to read, Chanson who wants to read, not anyone else. Um, that was so far. That was as far as I checked the um, the list and everything too, as well. But uh, uh, can you can you like, give MD him the link real quick? MD Live? Yeah, I'll give him uh, the link and everything. Um, I was gonna say, and now my friends are asking like, they're like, oh, can you bring paper? They're like paper towels. I'm like, I have to go. I'm like, I'm just gonna try to get that and everything too. So, so I just I was able to do that. It looks like. Everyone else has a link. I'm not sure where everyone is yet. Maybe it's still early. Who knows? But we're gonna we're gonna rock it. So really, just chance on. That's it. Only chance on wants to read. I, Dean I think Ms. Diane said she wanted to go. You what? I think Miss Diane said she wanted to go. Oh well, let's go. Yes. I put it in the in okay, my chat. That's where you said you wanted us to. Oh, that's my Put fault right there. It, it, it's been a long, yeah, it's been a long day. I had a host at, I look up at eight in the morning to host. And like, I don't normally wake up at eight in the morning to host an event. Like, that was 6.30 our time. Just, it was eight, so five, that it, would be five. That'd be 5.30, yeah, West Coast time. And Finn oh, woke up and all of them woke up on the West Coast, woke up at five in the morning and everything. And I'm like, damn, you are committed right there. I got to like show y'all some love let me see i'm gonna go uh message and I'll, I'll send that uh to md the link to md i got oh, MD. i sent it to M md can you just put it on the live feed please oh yeah yeah i got you i got you um i'll go take care of that um why don't we hear what diane ward has to say how you doing diane hi how are you tonight i well i hear how you are tonight i i got an airful i um when they announced about your, your grandma, I sent her some prayers. Don't worry. My grandmother's showing her where everything is, so don't worry about it. They're having a good time. Don't worry about it. All right. I'm going to read this piece. It's, um, this is uh, one short piece. It's called, I Read During Storm. Uh, and this took place while I was in elementary school. The elevator took its time coming to the lobby. It's true. But I wasn't concerned since I was waiting patiently. I entered and therefore thought nothing of the door's slow clo closing. It would eventually. I wasn't concerned. The elevator had a few floors to climb to my apartment. And since I was always eager to start my homework, I was already a nerd in elementary school. I commenced. To read. This elevator was chugging along slowly, stopping on each floor. I didn't particularly mind because I became absorbed when reading. I had a jump on my schoolwork. This is a good thing, right? The door finally opened on my floor. Her hair was pointing in two directions at once. I've never seen that before. Where have you been? She shouted at me. I looked at her and then the walls and said, huh? She repeated, where have you been? In the elevator. Alone? Yes. She's scaring me. I've never seen Ma like this. I've been looking for you. I've been in the elevator reading my book. Later, I found out that Ma ran up and down the stairwells and searched the landings for me. My elevator trip had taken too long. An adult accompanied me from the school bus from then on. Thank you. Wow. So beautiful. She was getting ready to go and up on the roof if the door hadn't opened. So, you know, those yeah. of you that have small children, you, you relate, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so I have <clears throat> Karma, who had said she wanted to go. So if Karma would like to go and anyone else, 
who would like to read and we'll bring our first speaker. I was um, uh, thinking if it's okay with Amber, we would let Word Gorilla go first since Word Gorilla is on uh, UK time and it's like obscenely early in the morning. So would that be okay? All right, Karma. Hi, um, so I've got this poem called Scars. Um, <clears throat> what is the cost of friendship? Is it money, time or energy? I gave all I had to give and I was repaid with my bones breaking because they were stretched too far. And then you took my fractured femur and ground it into dust to sprinkle on elephant tusks because there is magic in someone willing to sacrifice themselves for you. You left your knife in me, an accidental wound from a nightmare brought to life. I patched myself up and gave your dagger back, only to find it plunged in my gut once more. And now you are gone, and still I pay the price to footprints left in your wake. I do not take what is mine because you have more need. Memories held hostage by the knife in my back, and I do not know whose and I do not know whose side I am on. Will you repay your debt with a silent understanding or kick and scream because it's just not fair to have consequences for your actions? Lock me out, but no, I thrive in the snow, the cold white expanse of purity, keeping me calm, keeping me cool. Watch my roses grow again, each thorn sharp so you may not pick them. Red and pink and white and yellow, a rainbow after the storm of you. Because thunderstorms are beautiful, but they never last. Running from your problems, always two steps ahead in the marathon of life, so focused on being first, you never realize you are running alone. I will prune your damage and grow again. Thank you. Oh, I will prune your damage and grow again. One of us, one of us, one of us, one of us, one of us. You, we ought to make foam fingers that have like the number one. One of us. Oh, that would be so cool. Maybe I would love like it. Like an up down, uh, upside down P, you hold it like a finger, but it's really the P waving at you, like for poetry, the finger of poetry. Are you getting me on? Oh, this? like uh, hang on here, like I'm let me try to, I can make. Yeah. I guess like 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 that, like that. It, like invert it, it would be a P. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Make like like. That, that could be a dope idea. All right, um, so yeah, we would definitely have to get our first feature some merch on, <laughs> on that because yeah, everyone needs a, Never mind, uh, we're live. All right, so uh, I'm so excited. I had met uh, Word Gorilla in the UK er I, early this year. I was so blown away. I was like, this is so unique and interesting and fun. And I was sold, stamp my ticket, David, I'm on the train, let's go. And I told him, you, you please, please, please come and feature here at Word is Right. And I'm so blessed that he said, yes, we've had this on the books a hot minute. And I'm so, so excited for his, his co-feature tonight, Amber Dragala. All right, so let me get to the bio room. Uh, David Bowden is Word Gorilla, is Word Gorilla utilizing box B. <laughs> Utilizing beatboxing live looping, David Bowden is Word Gorilla. Utilizing beatboxing live looping, multi instrumentalism, he delivers Word Gorilla's brand of spoken word poetry performances to a variety of different educational settings, workplaces, and events across the UK and beyond, making performance poetry accessible and exciting for all. I exciting is not even gonna break the ice of what this is gonna be. I'm so freaking excited. You can find him at Word Gorilla, two hours. 2Ls.com. Please welcome him up to the mic, Word Gorilla. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Wicked. Okay, so it's uh, it's 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 one twenty-five a.m. in the morning. I've got loads of kids upstairs. <laughs> they belong to me. They're mine. So they might they might wake up and run down and go ah, but that's fine. So I'm I'm kind of like sort of talking quietly. And then in the end, I'll realize I'm doing a performance and I'll just be really, really loud. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. So my name's Word Gorilla, uh, Dave, Mr. B, I go by many names. And uh, I'm gonna introduce you, introduce you to me through the form of uh, rap, which is just rhythm and poetry. Here we go. Yes. Dum da 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 da
Sometimes I don't rhyme because actually it's a bit rubbish if you keep rhyming in poetry. You don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes what I say will make you think that some things are not right. You should kick up a stick and stand up and speak out and make a change because a better world is in your range. So sit back, relax, kick back, be cool. I have only one golden rule and that is choose to enjoy this poetry. Make this choice and you will see a world of possibility where words have the power to set us free. Words have the power to set us free. Words have the power to set us free. I'm expressing my full capabilities inside these educational facilities. Would someone agree with how I do this? I'm meditating, getting straight like a Buddhist. I'm dropping flavor, I'm a behaviorism, a vegetarian. But my technique is so necessary, even when I tell you I drop an acapella when I'm expressing. I'm never ever stressing. <laughs> So, I'm going to tell you something now. Uh, many, many years ago, I was, uh, it was Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday lunch, and I was at my grandma's, and I was kicking a ball against the fence, <laughs> trying to break the fence with the football, because that's the kind of boy I was. And anyway, my grandma comes to me, and she says, David, David, get inside. I ignored her, carried on kicking the ball, <laughs> Get inside, David. I knew what she wanted. She wanted me to come inside and help her cook the dinner or do something like that. I didn't want to do that. I want to kick my football against the fence. I carry on. I feel that clip round the head. It's a wonder I remember it. She hit me so hard. And she says, David. And she, she didn't sound like that. She sounded like this. David. That's how she sounded. David, get inside. Get inside. I was like, why? I've been to the allotment. We have things in, in England called allotments. You grow vegetables, fruits and vegetables. She'd been to the allotment and she got some vegetables. Brussels sprouts! Get inside and peel the Brussels sprouts! I don't know if you call them Brussels or Brussels sprouts in America, but they're like mini cabbages. Get inside and peel the Brussels sprouts. Anyway, you know, I'm 12 years old and my answer is this. No! And if you're going to say no to your grandma or anyone else like that, or anyone's older than you, you've got to give a reason. My answer was this one. No, because I don't like Brussels sprouts. That was my first reason. Second reason, no, because I don't like peeling Brussels sprouts. Anyway, another hit round the head, a pull on the ear. Ah! And she takes me inside and I'm there peeling the Brussels sprouts <laughs> through tears. And then she says to me, one of the most important things that I've ever been told in my life, a real piece of wisdom. She says, David, in fact, it wasn't like that, it was like this. David, sometimes you've just got to do things that you don't want to do. Sometimes you have just got to do things that you don't want to do. And my goodness, isn't that true? And sometimes the older you get, the more that you have to remember that. And sometimes it's hard to do things that you don't want to do. Man, like getting out of bed can be difficult some days depending on the emotional state that you're in so I wrote this poem based on that based on that word of got and how sometimes you got to change that into something else to get you through the day it's called got into get I've got to do this I've got to do that I've got to do something and that is a fact I've got to get up because I can't lie in bed and I've got to get moving be active instead and <sighs> got to get clean, I've got to get dressed, I've got to make sure I don't leave a mess, I've got to do things I don't want to do, I've got to, I must, and so must you, you've got to, 
And the problem here is not the content or the type of task, but the language that determines how you feel about doing it because I've got to implies that you don't really want to go through with it. Now, we've all got to do something that much is true, but if we change the words got into get, we create opportunity. And now I get to do something that I want to see through. I get to do this. I get to do that. I get to do something, and that is a fact. I get to get up because I can't lie in bed, and I get to get moving, be active instead, and I get to get clean, and I get to get dressed, and I get to make sure that I don't leave a mess, and sometimes I won't just get to do what I want to do. And that is always the case, and it will be for you. But mostly I'll decide. I'll decide that I get to. I get to see opportunity. And you can too. Thank you very much. Hey, let me tell you something. I know your country is no different from mine, but uh, it's full of celebrities, people on TV. And uh, I'm thinking, damn... Why aren't I on TV? I could definitely be famous. I could definitely be celebrity. Uh, in fact, one thing that celebrities are really, really good at is saying a hell of a lot and not really saying anything at all. So, i got a poem about that. It's about me being on TV. And for the next two minutes, I'm going to say absolutely nothing. But I'm going to say a hell of a lot at the same time. Get me on the TV, get me on the telly. I promise I won't make those airwaves smelly. Because what I have to say will in no way stink. I've words stored ready for the telly that will really make you think. Words that will fire your mind up. See your brain only cooling with an ice cold drink. <laughs> yes. Get me on TV, you'll really like me a lot Because what I have to say will really hit the spot Whether you're red, white, orange or purple or green I am what you need on your wide flat screen My words will nourish like protein <coughs> Alert like caffeine <coughs> The words I speak will be like UV rays That you won't want to block out with sunscreen Listen very closely You need me on a channel Because when I'm on TV you wouldn't want to touch that control panel. You see, I need a global platform into everyone's home. And when I'm on TV, you will not bemoan like you do when you see politicians dodging questions, avoiding truths for endless questioning sessions. Unlike them, I will speak what you need, what is true. And my content will always be hot, like a smoking barbecue. Tss. You need the words I have to say, but the only way you'll hear them is if I'm on TV today, and that is the only way my message will be heard. And frankly, my request is not that absurd. So, get me on the goggle box. Get me on the tube. My televised performance will season your mind like a salt and pepper or a stock cube seasons food. And I know that you've heard people say this before, but I am not your average troubadour. I'm so special. I'm so significant. I was sent to change the game please get me on tv oh look at me can't you see i need that fame thank you very much There's a little uh, big bike race, it's called the Tour de France. You've probably seen that, you can nod if you know about the Tour de France. But you know people, they ride their bikes. People ride their bikes and they wear like, you know, really tight clothing, lycra. You know what I'm saying? They wear that lycra. I love riding bikes, man, but you, I tell you something, you will not, you will not get me in lycra. It's not cool. I know I look good in it, I would look good in it, but I'm not wearing that lycra because it is not cool. And I've got a poem all about riding bikes and not wearing lycra. And I've got a house band here to help me through it. And they say it like this. Everybody should ride bicycle. Everybody should ride bicycle. Bike for me, bike for you, bike for everyone. Bike for me, bike for you, bike for everyone. Bike rider. 
bike rider. Yes, I'm out on my bicycle and I'm feeling free and I'm riding towards non-conformity. To get there, I choose my own thoughts, deeds and styles, so I wear my denim shorts, mile after mile. I choose my own route, place after place, and I decide the speed I'll ride and if I want to race. I never blindly follow others, I wouldn't be carelessly led, and I dare to be different and blaze my own trail up ahead instead. Bike rider. Bike rider. Yes, I'm out on my bicycle and I'm feeling free and I'm riding towards non conformity. I ride on the road, then the forest, and then the dirt, and I switch up my styles to keep me alert. My bike's made of steel. It's real tough and surly. It needs to be strong. It needs to be burly to tackle a landscape covered in tests. I've too much resolve to let those tests suppress. Yes. Bike rider. Bike rider. Yes, I'm out on my bicycle and I'm feeling free and I'm riding towards non-conformity where the path to difference can be dangerous. Like riding no-handed downhill. But I ride with courage and purpose, energised by my own free will. And I go with a maverick riding style to mark a course for outsiders like me. And I ride with my feet off the pedals at times. Woo! In the direction of liberty. Bike rider. Bike rider. Yes, I'm out on my bicycle and I'm feeling free and I'm riding towards non-conformity. This ride is the story of my life's plan. It determines my character and who I am. Everybody should ride bicycle. Everybody should ride bicycle. Bike for me, bike for you, bike for everyone. Bike for me, bike for you, bike for everyone. I do a little bit of a musical interlude. Do 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 Blue moon, you saw me standing alone Without a care in my heart, without a love of my own Blue moon, now I'm no longer alone Without a care in my heart A little sip of water now. So, I'm going to tell you something now. Very, very important. And that is this. Get my house band back on this because they like to introduce it. They like to say, I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to tell you something now. About the worst flavour in the world. Yes. This is a poem about... Oh, uh, oh, uh, this is a poem about, yes, yes, this is a poem about the worst flavour in the world, yes, okay, this is a poem for everyone who brushes their teeth, if you don't brush your teeth, turn away now, I've got a poem that I'll have to do another time and another day about people with rotten teeth, okay, I brush my teeth at least twice a week, <sighs> probably should do a bit more. Uh, so yeah, it's about brushing your teeth. It's also a poem for anyone who likes to drink orange juice. Other citrus juicer is available. You can have lime juice, grapefruit juice, uh, pineapple juice. I think that's citrus. Um, but the point is this. This is a poem for anyone who's ever brushed their teeth. 
and then straight away drank orange juice. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the worst flavour in the world. And this poem is called Teeth, Teeth, Teeth Brush, brush, brush drink, 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 Juice. juice. <laughs> Brush teeth, orange drink. That's a wretched taste. It tastes like biro ink. Teeth brush, orange juice. Caustic mouth, a scowling juice. Tongue stung, cutting, bitter. Taste abusing. Heavy hitter, orange teeth. Amalgamation. Transformation, <laughs> mouth mutation. <laughs> Teeth, drink, juice, brush, incomparable. That means there's nothing like it. Disgust. So there's some wisdom for you there. If you've ever brushed your teeth and then drank orange juice, or if you're about to do it, don't do it. Okay, this next poem is uh, is about. So I sort of, I suppose, it's a little bit about my childhood, actually. Um, sort of. Basically, when I was a kid. I was probably like uh, a bit of a pain sometimes. <laughs> anyway, you'd always get these adults or you know teachers or, or, or people who were just like really, really out of order to you, and they made you feel like this big, you know. And um, as I got older, I just said to myself, "That's not how how it's going to be. That's not what how thing how I want things to be." But often those kind of negative experiences for young people tend to really kind of perpetuate and go on and on and they grow bitter and make times hard for adults as well. So um, this is what this is about. Uh, it's called Youth Needs. It goes like this. <laughs> Youth needs stability, sense of belonging, community, guidance, consistency and abundance of positivity. Tough love disagrees. Tough love. That is what they need. It didn't do me any harm. And now look at me. Don't put a foot wrong. Don't make a mistake. Don't step out of line. For your sake. Tough love is demeaning. You're stupid. You're dim. You ain't worth a thing. Rotten, that's you. Tough love is prejudice. Your brother's trouble. And you will be too. Tough love doesn't act with care. No hugs. Just hard stares. Capricious, unfair. Don't you cry, no tears. Control through fear. Tough love is just a broken, bitter record replaying the same old song. You're useless and you always will be. 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 And if that is the soundtrack to your youth, it's hard to counter with courage. You know what? We'll see. We'll see. So youth breaks and youth fractured and cracked and youth lashing out and fighting back and tough love wonders where it all went wrong. Thinks it can fix youth's issues with the same old song. Even tougher love. That's what they need. It didn't do me any harm. And now look at me. Once youth, rich in possibility, now dour and soured by negativity. And this wasn't how it had to be. Thank you. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got two more poems for you. Is that okay? Have I got time for two more poems? Yeah? All right, yeah. wicked. Do we have time for two more poems? Yes! yes! We okay. just got new bands. They, they, they're in it. One of us, one of us. Let's okay, go. two more plans, wicked. So, uh, so I like the planet. Uh, I think we probably should all like the planet. We all live on it. I definitely like this planet more than I like the moon. 
I'm sure the moon's got a use. It's, a pro it's probably a bit like wasps, isn't it? We don't really know what they're for, but, you know, I'm sure the moon's good. Anyway, we digress. I like planet Earth, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and um, and we've got to do as much as we possibly can to make planet Earth the best place it can be and deal with things like climate change um, without being a preaching pain about, you know, doing this and doing that, you know. So we can all do our bit. We can all do marginal gains to kind of save the planet. And this poem is all about that. I do a lot of work in schools and, uh, and I always do this poem uh, because I think it's important for us to recognise what we can do. And this poem is called The Beast. <laughs> Eat less meat, buy less clothes, walk a jog or run a cycle, reducing traffic on the roads. Ooh, turn up your conscience, <laughs> turn down the heating. Consider if the food you're eating has to travel on a plane, must be packed in cellophane, must be treated chemically, has to be substantially super in its portion size. Buy locally for your supplies. Fish for tea straight from the sea must be caught sustainably and sources of our energy must be produced renewably. Say no to using plastic straws and upcycle tables, chairs and drawers and turn the lights off when you leave and keep paper from gifts that you receive then reuse, reducing waste and food is good to eat past sell-by dates. Swap, don't shop, don't don't litter drop, don't fill your bath right to the top. When council pop, council pop is basically water out of the tap around here. Shh. When council pop just costs us pence, bottled water makes no sense. Ground control, can you hear me? I'll try to fly once only yearly because I love the planet dearly and I know the implications really. Our planet Earth is taking a kick in and it's time that we all start committing to change something, one thing at least, or planet Earth will be deceased. Come on, man. It's not too late to stop the beast. Thank you. Right, my last poem for you. And it's been an absolute pleasure coming on and I can see fingers clicking and I can see people smiling. That for me, this is what poetry is all about. It's about invoking a feeling, whether it's a, a, a light and dark, and hopefully you've, you've, you've got that from me about, you know, uh, it's, it just takes you to different zones really. So um, thanks, for, thanks for watching. And, um, and, if, and if you like me, I'll type in who I am and where you can see uh, stuff about me or whatever uh, and, and what I do and, and check me out. So, um, yeah, this last poem is all about my love for poetry. And I, and this sort of, for me, it's kind of a paradox of how I can also find it really boring. And, and I think a lot of other people do find it boring. And, and I talk to a lot of people and say, you know, I read a lot of poetry and, and it's, it's like one of my jobs. And they're like, poetry's boring. We think it's dead. We think it's dying. We think it's sick. And this it, is also a poem about... Uh, words and the different meanings of words and slang and the fact that for example the word sick can mean a couple of things there like it can mean like oh god i'm gonna be sick <laughs> or it can mean you know what that is sick that is wicked you know so it's all about that and um it's one of my favorite poems i just uh, if you can love your own poems uh this one's the one i love and um you know if things work out well we'll probably get married so uh this is called, My Poem Was Sick. My poem was sick, you know. I took him to the doctors, and the doctor told me to go. He said, this poem has an incurable disease, far beyond my own expertise. My poem was sick, I said. I called an ambulance, and I was filled with dread. And the paramedic proclaimed, it's dead. It's dead. It's dead good, dead right. A poem this sick will give us all a fright. My poem was sick, you see. It needed medication from the pharmacy. I gave it a potion of chemical diversity. But its survival was not in certainty. It was sick. So sick, diseased and frightful, so ill. It was not allowed to attend any poetry recital for fear its sickness would infect become viral. 
And then one day, my poem was laying on its sick bed, resting its weary and tired sick head. And I said, poem, you're sick, you know. Poem, you're sick, you see. You're the sickest of them almost certainly. You are dead good. You are dead right. Your powerful flow will be the main highlight of any top night and a campfire light where people get together to be thrilled and delight over words of potency, words of pain, words of sickness, words of disdain and words of happiness, words of true love, words of passion, positivity and purity that make us come together and hold each other tight and hug as one. Poem. You are sick, you see, and I want that sickness infecting me, my friends, my family, everybody. I want us to all get ill of your sick poetry. And from that day, with resounding sickness, my poem could be seen delivering slickness. Men, women, children, all bearing witness to its poetic, powerful flow. Some would laugh. <laughs> and some would cry. But all would know that poem was one sick, ill, vocabulist dynamo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Word Gorilla. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed my poetic experience. Uh, if you like me, as a, I'm going to put what I, you know, where you can find me in the chat and, and follow me and, and see what I'm up to. I make stupid videos. I do all kinds of stuff, and I, and I love poetry. So it's wondrous being here. Thank you so much for your time. Peace be the journey. Oh, my God! Let me unmute your mics for Word Gorilla! One of us, one of us, one of us, one of us, one of us. That was incredible. That was incredible, bro. That was an experience right there. And Yo, that was crazy. This is also like a random oh, side note too as well, Word Gorilla. But like there's, my barber is so similar to you so i'm just enthralled by your words and the fact that you look like my barber it's like my barber's just like doing a rap and i'm like i love it because i like barber i've gone to for over 10 years and he's a freaking awesome person i'm like okay now that i know what work looks like he must be awesome your, your your barber sounds like a sounds like a great guy but more importantly he he sounds like he looks great yes yes that's the thing too as well Oh, Poet Khan has a few words to say. I just, I've, um, I've never uh, experienced, I've never, this is my very first time experiencing. You were amazing. Yes. You were absolutely amazing. Yes. And I'd like to find you on Instagram and follow you some more. Or hi, wherever you are, however you. Yeah, I'll put, I put everything in the chat. So basically, I mean, you know, I, well, I would do a lot of work with kids and uh, in schools. I used to be a head teacher. You call it a principal, wouldn't you? So I was a principal of a of a of a primary school, uh, but I couldn't be complicit with 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 testing and other stuff. I love working with young people, so I do this now as a business, and I go into schools and I develop kids writing. We do a lot of rapping and uh, yeah. beatboxing and stuff. But I've got a website and I've got I've got other stuff like that. But yeah, my name's Word Word Gorilla, and I chose it because. Uh, I explain to the kids what a, what a gorilla is, but I say I'm not going around whacking people or, you know, guns or anything. Thinking and writing, that's my fighting. So that's why I'm word gorilla. And what do I fight against? I, I, I'm very clear about it. You know, writing is all about, it's about those battles in your mind, you know, and you can use it to, to, to fight against them. So it's a really powerful tool to develop health and to develop well-being. So um, I'll put all those details in the in the chat about where you can find me. And, That's um, awesome. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so yeah. much. Yes. Amazing first speaker. Yeah. Every single event that I've done, I'm like, you guys have to be here on the Saturday because we have Amateur Gala and the word gorilla from the UK is the sick beatboxer. And then they, they, they don't, uh, I don't think that that even can explain what just happened. No. 
what the fuck just happened? That was that was a, an incredible art form. You are a craftsman of yes. the word and a genius, a lyrical genius. Uh, it is the, yes, so very polished. Um, I definitely whatever we can do to open um, doors for all of our features, whether you have merch, whether you have websites, uh, whether you have books or uh, all of that good stuff. Please make sure you're following them. Uh, and again, like Nick says, you know, when when we were in a bar or in a, a cafe, we would be passing the hat around and putting a couple bucks, whatever we had in our pockets uh, for the features tonight. So if you could dip down, even if it's say three or four bucks, if everyone did that, it would be a nice feature night. That was definitely worth the price of admission. And you have only seen half of tonight. Like, damn, if you don't feel that way, when you hear from Anna Virgil Gala later, I'll, um, we're going to have some words, right? Because that, that woman is fire too, which is why the two of you are paired together tonight. Wow. Uh, we're going to have an insanely amazing night. All right, I see MD Live is in the house now. The open mic list, I've got Dane and Doc Janning. Uh, Khan and uh, Kemlin are going to read some more poetry. If anyone else would like to continue to read, uh, we'll, we'll go a little while, and then we'll have Amber come up and give her set. Uh, so just drop it in the chat. But Dane, are you ready? Oh, we lost Put me on Dane, are you, are you ready to read, Dane? He, he, I'll message him. He, he might be away from his phone. Okay, so Doc, we'll go ahead and pop you on, my friend, if you're ready. I am ready. Right. Okay. In the past two days, I've written four poems plus uh, a bit of Ars Poetica philosophy. Uh, do I have time for all of it? So we have a very short list tonight, Doc. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely give you, you know, four minutes if you want on the- It's, about, it's about five minutes. Four, five, that's well, that's all right. All right, I'll give you an extra, but now you're gonna be on the clock though, so. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yes, as long as it's not like a, like a 10 minute Paul Conquesa monologue, we'll be fine. Oh, it isn't, it okay. isn't. All right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. And if anyone wants to read, uh, even in the second round, just let me know. I mean, yeah, second. Okay. The Ars, the Ars Poetica piece is a bit of, of philosophy I wrote. Our thoughts as poets, as creatives, are so rich and overwhelming. We often cannot express them in clear, simple terms. So we say what we can in whatever way our understanding will allow, and others will say what we cannot in their own unique ways. Geometry and colors of love. Rising from an ancient dawn, Venus stretches her arms in gentle geometry and colors of love compassing all who seek its joy, waking reveries of bliss in the passion of day and all the secret spaces of ecstasy. Eros and Arato wake, singing in timeless echoes and all the languages of time, of ripening passion and entwining of hearts, weaving together neath the blanket of forever they embark on a barge of dreams, sailing into an infinite future. Moonflowers, and moonflowers are real flowers. They're a white variety of morning glory, which blooms at night. Moonflowers flourish amid magic of moonbeams and shadows in enchanted veils and glades, in whispering labyrinths of night and star-filled caverns of sky. Their blooms and sorcel the air with rich fragrance of passion, light the night with blissful petaled glow, create an ambiance of soaring pleasure, all to engender bowers, bowers of joy, bowers of ecstasy, Flowers of love. 
in the this is in the empire of infinity tides of time ebb and flow over under around and through every direction every dimension known unknown imagined they swirl tumble and fall, fall wander ramble and stravage cycle circle and spin hop skip and jump run walk and crawl speed and lag in all the colors and voices of forever through every when and no when they create inscapes mindscape dreamscapes soundscapes lightscapes starscapes in time's eternal search for itself and finally love is love is a silent sacred joy expressed in all the colors and fragrances of forever soundscapes of ecstasy and timescapes of bliss and love is a journey of dreams resonating through infinity amid songscapes of stars for love is an expression an expression of life's yearning for itself. Thank you. Oh, yes, Doc. Cameron was saying that it was her favorite poem of yours. No, the, the one that has all the swirls and the scapes. Oh, that one was awesome. <laughs> so much Thank movement. You. It's so exciting. I want Thank to do women and yeah, I wish you guys could see the artwork in Kemlin's house. It's amazing how much artwork she's done. So yes, uh, thank you so, so much, Doc. We, we just love your work and you guys can expect a book from him next year. All right, uh, is Dane, Dane, are you back? Hi, Diane. Dane Inns. Dane, Dane Inns, 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 Inns. All right, Dane is... I don't know what Dane is doing. Well, we're gonna keep going. All right, so that means you're up. Oh, I'm up. All right, oh, so we'll go. We'll, okay, we'll go. Cameron. Yay, Cameron! Yay! And then Thomas. If Con is not back, Thomas, you. We'll we'll just do this. We'll go Cameron and Thomas, and we'll have Con come in here and read her poem. Okay. okay. So, thanks to Marissa who introduced me to the genre of poetry erotica, I have uh, become a new connoisseur of the genre. So I believe that if a poet writes poetry erotica, it should not rot in some closet somewhere. That is a travesty. So. I write for Singapore Poetry Writing Month. Uh, it's a group and there's about 8,000 people in there. I have a favorite poet that I recently discovered enjoys writing poetry erotica. However, nobody has ever read it except me. I'm the first. So I asked him for permission to share his work. So I'm going to do a cover and have you enjoy it because good erotica should not rot in the closet, right? Yes. No, no, it's a shame. All right, so here it is. It's called G Suite. You asked for help in Google Sheets because you know how I excel in the sheets and skillful in entry. You had issues with separation by commas, but we are a pair of inverted commas like an inseparable couple 69. You asked for my assistance in Google Forms because you are informed about how on form I am when I come to filling a form as slightly attractive as yours. To key myself into the blank between thighs as you require my entry before submitting all responses captured and upon completion. You know fully well my competency in unzipping and how my compression feels like when I pack my information lightly into your folder open for me. After all, a sperm contains 37.5 megabytes of data and my ejaculation, uh, 
transfers 15.8 seven five gigabytes of genetic information to you from my hard disk. Even if you do not store it internally, I am certain that you uh, agree in my prowess when it comes to the sweet. <laughs> Okay, no, the, the, wait, okay, so a poem like that deserves a poetic response, right? Yes, 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 okay. yes. you know, you can't just- Oh, so you got a response. Oh, I have a response, right, okay. as yes. as long as it's not too long. No, no, it's pretty okay. short. Okay, this is called Air on G-String. Dum, dum, oh. dum, dum. Wait, 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 hang dum. on, I'm sorry. I have to pause something. Take Word Gorilla off the spotlight. So Nick did that and Nick left. So I don't know if I can do that. I don't know either. Um, let me. All right. So apparently we're still on spotlight. Nick, oh. Nick was doing that. Oh, okay. Let's okay. See. Yeah. Let's more. Hear more. Yeah. More. And uh, no, this no doesn't spotlight. let me do that. Oh, well, you know what? If you Wait. want. Oh, okay. Ron, I'm going to make you the host so you can do that. Okay. Uh, because I'm on a Chromebook and it won't let me spotlight on. Oh, end. yeah. Okay. So I. I all right. Okay. No, wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> Where's Ron Mark Thompson? There he is. Ron Mark Thompson, we need your prowess. All right, Ron, you're the host. Yes. Can you please um un apparently unspotlight Chance our on. feature? Oh, because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, he is. He is spotlighted. I just can't. I, I didn't have it in um in a viewer, uh, reader view. Okay, I had yeah, gallery. Yeah. all right, I see that, yeah. Um, so, okay. so we... it's done, it's been moved. Okay, all right, okay. thank you. Thanks. Okay, so okay. now, now is my response poem. Okay. It's called Air on G-String. Dum, 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 da, 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 Dum 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 da 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 da. Slowly you rest your heartbeat to my base. Strings plucked one by one. Draw over my body with your bow, coaxing each note with soft whispering hums, resonating echoes in my voluptuous, vacuous form. Be not deceived, hush, do not rush. Legato offers crescendo dynamics from pianissimo to fortissimo. Play melodies evoke harmonies. Hopes of ascension, this divine foretaste, foreplay of movements to come. Take a breath. Open your eyes and see me wearing nothing but a G string. Ooh. Oh my goodness. I love it. Whoa. She's amazing. I, I, even Khan is like, what is going on? Oh, I, they're still trying to catch up with what Word Gorilla did to their brains. Uh, Word Gorilla <laughs> completely eviscerated their skulls and uh, scrambled. Lobotomy, frontal lobotomy. And yeah. now it's of hocus pocus all right all right so we're gonna let thomas come up to the mic oh my god thomas good to see you hi right. thomas. Yes. Thomas. thomas yes thomas connor <laughs> dean in if you're in the building um i'm sending the bat signal so <laughs> you better get your stuff together and then we'll have congo next what's up everybody I, I seems like it seems like you guys are having a great time and i want to join <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, so I'm gonna go off topic. Usually with me, I always do some socially, uh, you know, poems that are socially conscious, but not today. <sighs> I was 10 when I fell in love with this girl from Brooklyn, Puerto Rican young goddess. She was all Flatbush, Vanderveer projects, all salsa and Caribbean, Mighty Sparrow and Marley, Laveau y Ventura. She was Juve and Junkanoo, Boricua on Fifth Ave on Sunday afternoon. High cheekbones brown, beautifully, slightly stubborn hair, perfectly matching her skin. She branded the hue of the gods. To me, she was birthed holy. I still remember her smile. Teeth, fifth grade crooked. Clothes, 81 fashioned. She was a fly girl in living color. We walked each other to the corner sometimes held hands or pinkies. This was our every day for five years. 
We parted ways on the sixth, reluctantly bid it adieu. I felt emotions I never felt. I was young in this world, didn't know a thing, but I knew her. Just the thought of her painted a better tomorrow. Mm. I hope I see you later type of excitement. She smiled and walked away. Vanderveer House is her home. My East 29th Street, she made me smile even in her absence. I lost my boyhood and innocence with the crest of her smile. Then June came, last day of school. We walked to the corner one last time, parting with a kiss absent and touch, yet still remember her cherry scent perfume. I lost all my boyhood and innocence in that smile. I now wonder where she is. End poem. Oh, man, Thomas. Good job, Thomas. Oh, you guys unmute your mics, please. Yes, Thomas Connor. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. So since we have such a small, um, I know we have some people coming in, but if uh, right now Dane does not seem to be upon us, <laughs> um, and so that leaves me with Khan and Nico, and in, so instead of taking a break um, now because. Uh, there's only two more uh, poets on the list. We're going to go ahead and work through that, bring up our feature. And then when our feature, I mean, if you guys would like to be after the feature in the final round, you can just uh, drop your name in. We will not be doing an after hours party. Uh, well, Manually. It won't be through. It won't be through Zoom. It would be through Instagram. So we we're going to be setting up a live mic here tonight and poeting, but we'll do it off the grid. Uh, but we won't be doing an after hours party tonight. So if you're thinking you might stick around and read in the after hours, you're not going to be able to do that. So you need to uh, just drop your name. So I know that includes UCP probably. Uh, he's he's sending me the Prada signal. I got you, UCP. All right, so let's do that. We'll go. Um, we'll go. Con and Nico, and then we'll break, and we'll um, we'll bring up our feature, and then uh, we'll whoever else is on the list, then we will go. Are you ready, beautiful? All right, here. Do you want to scoot closer? Let me scoot out of the way. Get out of the way. Con's coming. <laughs> hey, um, can I read too? You can. Yeah. Small small mic tonight. We're I'm giving people like five minutes or so. So. Just not to like can really shock because sure. that would be like 10 minutes. <laughs> we love you closer. Love you closer. Thank y'all. Uh, thank you to all the all my poets in the building. Love y'all. Um, this is from my book, uh, My Abyss. I wrote him free. Um, this is called Corona. <clears throat> so fly. Be an angel if you gotta take the stars and clouds, put them in your pocket and hold them. Just bring them back for me. Corona got him. I am sure Corona was the cure mm. to an unjustified pre-qualified without prerequisite to life term sentence. Mm. I will always believe in his innocence, even if just for me to sleep at night. Mm. Why? I wrote love poems to the love of my life saying, why do I live in a world where I will never have your love? Mm. What is life without your love? I talk to forever regularly, daily, considering what life would be, being in love with a grave, memories, mm. in love with 15 minute phone calls, just mm. enough to say I fucking miss you. Mm. I lived Breathe them because he was love, Corona. Corona was the cure. Mm. Narrowed two life sentences down to two gruesome years of compulsory treatment. Mm. 
he was innocent. Too much of a Casanova to take anybody's pussy. Mm -hmm. He loved me. Corona answered the call. I am sure he surrendered. Would rather be with his mother than in a hell called an undeserved prison cell forever. Corona gave him his wings. I just know it. Liberty may not have found that black skin any other way. Corona, Corona, thank you. Mm. Thank you guys. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. She's amazing, you guys. Go get her book, please. Thank you guys. I have, um, then I, I have never shared this before from my book. This is called Happy. So like to hear, here go. <laughs> Happy. Happy without you. Mm. Happy without you forever. Mm. Without you this time around. I have found this to be the sole reason I pray for serenity. I look for happy. It peers at me with such obscurity, snickering, pointing through the neighbor's curtains. I am certain I saw happy and a combination of blue dream kush, Hennessy, a molly, a blackout, to wake up still searching for happy. The air I breathe, my two seeds, the fact that I may have to unwind love in another lover's eyes, heart, just trying to find happy. My search for you matches my grind, knowing the only way to receive the increase is to be so I be happy here where I are happy, happy, happy with me. Mm. Yes. Yes. We're happy with you, Con. I'm the happiest person in the world right now. Thank Go you. get her book, My mm -hmm. Abyss. Poems by Poet Khan Ross Faya. I'm, I'm telling people to buy them through the poets first before you buy them at the press because they need to make the money also. So please go support her. Uh, find her on every. Oh, oh my God. We have we have a show. Yes, we do. Is that what you're going to do? Yes. That's okay. why we're really good co hosts. Um, we think the same. We uh, just are launching a brand new open mic here at The Word is Right. So we have um, open mics almost every day of the week. We have an erotic open mic second and fourth monday of the month officially it, officially so it's going to toggle with cafe generalissimo we will be starting 6 p.m mountain standard time 8 p.m eastern all erotica and if you don't write erotica you should come and try because it's not um it, it'll be the entire spectrum including you know from asexual to uh hardcore bdsm and others uh but okay. please come find something central love to write yeah, about. central love poems would work too. i mean how many of you have lotion on your desk Okay, well, we can start there. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Write a lotion um, poem. Let's, 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 let's just start it. Let's go there. And then there's only one way to go, and that's up. Yeah. So uh, let us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, you can't make this stuff up. This no. is just total organic poet love right here. Um, this is what happens when you get incredible poets together. And we need to stop wasting time because the Amber's been very patient waiting for us. But please come and check out the erotic open mic, Poet Con Ross Faya, uh, and myself will be doing that the second and fourth Wednesday, uh, excuse me, Monday of the month. It's going to be so much fun. All right. Our last, uh, our last person on the open mic before our feature. It's going to be Nico. And then if Dane has come back into the house, we'll bring Dane somewhere, wherever we can fit him in. Uh, UCP and Doc Gianni will be um, after our lovely, lovely feature. So Nico, if you would like to take the mic, my friend, it's all yours. Hello. Um, I, I was going to sing a song and then do a poem. So I'll do that. Um, 
because uh, Ross Fire saying uh, did happy. I'm gonna do clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Bring me down. I don't know those lyrics. Like, there's just a lot, very, very repetitive. But um, yeah, there you go. Um, this is probably my favorite poem, but it's not a very good poem. I would like to share with you that I am falsely philosophical. My content tends to be full of fallacies and fake fields of reference, but I've got a face that fronts confidence, you see. I am a con. But of course, I'm on a course to send convulsions coursing through your minds because just platitudes I share fare better and have more credit than words spoken by an empty speaker. You see, I'm not an empty speaker because the words I speak are transposed and the words I write down. The words I write down are transposed from my thoughts and my thoughts come from a line of inconvenient madness. So the, the, so the kind I portray is the thoughts transposed this way to, so the kind I portray is the, Hmm. So the kind I portray so, so the kind I portray the thoughts transpose this way to display through words I say an acceptable and reasonable idea. My forte is to foray and attempt to leave the listening prey in dismay. Needless to say, I try to slay stupidity out of the way of the mind and replace it with something that will leave an audience thinking. Such is my intent. However, I feel that I'm starting to slack because I feel I may lack the capabilities at such an audacious attack, yet I've been on my knees pleading my intentions. Come on! <sighs> Come on! But it takes like half an eon just for a thought to dawn on me to share. This is why I'm a con. Because I can sit, I can stand right here and pretend to all end that I have a message to send. <laughs> but I don't. Yay! Oh my God. Oh my God. God. You guys said it. Unmute your mic. Yes. So good to hear oh. you speak. Very good. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's me, been so long. You know what you should do? You should get that poem and cover it but erotic. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nico, mm. will you send Poet Khan that poem so she can cover it, but she'll she'll cover it as if she was reading it erotica? If you'd be willing, I would love to. You'd have to be there. She'll too, cover so. it for you. Oh yeah, yeah. sure, that'd be cool. I'll right. send that to her. Because we I, have, I, we I have, have that erotic over my coming up. I think we should take <gasps> We nice should take a poem things. from one of our friends in the community that's not erotic and make it erotic. Yes. Okay, we're gonna totally do that. <clears throat> okay. All right. So you can do Nico's poem. That would be awesome. I'd be so honored. I'll figure out. I'll figure out I who have else. To sing a little bit. I gotta find somebody. All right. We can, no. I'm <laughs> really trying to work hard here in this Chromebook. All right. Um, I am. So I met Amber Dredal, um at, of course, Midnight's Open Mic. So if you haven't been to, drop it in the chat. He will drill it in your brain until you know what it is. Uh, but it's an amazing open mic. They meet twice a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't remember when. Sorry, uh, Midnight. You don't pay me enough for that. Um, but no, really, uh, she she blew my mind. So Amber Dredal, she's a whole different place in my mind. And I was like, please, I need to hear more of you. Do you want to come feature? <laughs> and, and I was like, who am I going to hit? pair with her right and it was really more like who was like you know gonna pair these two poets up and then it was like why don't you put them together and it's perfect so i'm gonna read her bio real quick please 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 follow her amber one of the things that didn't uh get in here is your your social medias and your cash handles so if you if when i'm done introducing you you'd like to add those uh that would be amazing since we're live and a lot of people come back and watch it after the fact all right amber jergala I started writing 10 years ago. I prefer spit poetry and often have a slam style. Performed in Chicago, Phoenix, Denver, and hosted a venue in Colorado Springs before COVID hit. My passion for writing comes from interacting with the community and helping others feel comfortable. Enough to share the word. I performed on and off for 10 years, but have recently re-engaged because Zoom has allowed us to outreach further, right? But I do prefer in-person. I'm always looking for new opportunities in the community and welcome collaborations or anything to assist in the community of poets. Maybe that means that I'll get an Amber Dragala poem to, to do for Monday, oh, yeah. and you can do Nico's to do Monday. Oh. All right, well, please welcome up to the stage. Unmute your mics. Give a big round of applause for Amber Tricola! Yeah. 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 Let's go! Thank you. 
this has been awesome. I can see maybe why you paired me. <laughs> Word gorilla. Um, I'm really excited. So thank you. Um, I just wrote this one. And after hearing tonight, I'm going to try it. Uh, I haven't done it yet. So I wasn't going to, but then I decided tonight seems like a really good night to do it. So, okay. What's a girl gonna do but use anger for fuel? Let the pain drain, smear the war paint with blood from the bleeding heart. Fuck you, you left scars. And so they tell me I'm callous. Call me tough nut, busting balls, badass. Cause tears are victimization of cares wasted. And people sin and life sometimes doesn't give a damn. And there's always someone who has it worse off than you. So what you want me to do? I got my finger on the trigger of self-destruct. And I'm playing a game of shit out of luck. And they tell me don't sweat it, but I bet it would get to them if they had to sink or swim they'd be dropping like a lead anchor into the deep end so i don't rise like a phoenix i rise like ashes from bonfires fiending on vengeance i get high on my regressions mistakes pumping like venom into my brain straight shot to my brain bleeding guilt into my subconscious rupturing tainted nonsense until i'm foaming straight hate from my face gotta lock empathy up in a safe because god forbid i relate it's wicked meets the demon it's mercy like and feelings it's a villain against the monster I'm gonna win before I'm gonna lose my shot to one more lost cause so tell me I'm the problem tell me I'm the one you want to break I'm the next mistake tell me I live with walls of pain slap on armor to shame that I like playing games that I like them deranged that I'm damaged that like I like it when you're mad tell me I'm the one who has the problem so what you have nothing to say don't you know you made me this way so that's my First one. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Woo! I have no, no idea. That was fire. I froze my screen. I hit like that three at the exact same time. I, I don't even know. Can I stop video? Will it even? Oh, God. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Amber. Please keep going. Okay. Um, so I have a couple slams. Those are my slams and my spits where I normally have a rhythm and I write from a rhythm first before I write from the words. And I have a couple that I wrote from the words first. Um, so I'll do a few spits and then I'll try to slow it down so that I have some, some words. Um, <clears throat> Skeletons in my closet. Ghosts, yep, I got them. You don't need to be another Superman to me. Take your powers back to Gotham. Put your cape back in the closet. Go ahead and put your sword and shield back. And stop acting like I'm your damsel in distress. The boogeyman here is already dead. The Joker sleeps next to me in bed. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary said. She'd rather go back to Wonderland with Alice than live in a world where Cinderella lost her palace because she signed a prenup. So wife's an alcoholic because all the seven doors just get drunk. And Spider-Man won't stop spinning his webs because he got hooked on oxymeds. And Batman won't come out of his cave. So we're all just slaves to the fairy tales we used to be. See, I grew up on the same bedtime stories and books and look, I waited for you as long as I could. I grew out my hair as long as Rapunzel's and I woke up every day and I put on a pretty face. So when you finally arrived, I'd be the one that caught your eye. And I sat alone at night and cried, waiting for a guy to be my hero. And the number that showed up was zero. So if you want somebody to save, I hate to say, but you're about a million heartbreaks too late. And if you want a damsel in distress, I guess you better find a woman willing to play the victim. Maybe one with some childhood dreams left in them. Because see here, we're all now grown. And we all now know what being a princess really means. And trust me, it ain't any little girl's big dream. I have to go back and it's very quiet. <laughs> we can okay. make it loud if you want. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. okay. I'll slow it down. I leave that side of the bed for the lonely side of me. The side you can't see and the side that stays hidden and the side that keeps tripping on lovers immortality. 
I leave it for the pieces that stay missing and the parts of me that keep giving to a bloodline of pompous animosity, the self-worth that stays lost to me because I keep breathing life back into deceased intimacy because all I can crave is a touch that wants to stay. And when they go to leave, they take the best of me because that's all I keep giving because I'm obsessed with winning love that's not there for the taking and a heart that won't heal because it's too busy breaking into my insecurities. So I leave that side of the bed for the lonely side of me. The side that doesn't want to heal because anger is better than pain and I'd rather play a game than lose myself again. And so I let the pillow sit and I let the sheet stay still. And I sleep in a slither close to the edge so I never let another man make me forget that even when I wasn't alone, I felt lonely here with you. There lies the place where my dreams died and it yearns for new hope to arrive and I dream of the one that I let in. But until then I leave it open because this train station is broken. It's haunted with goodbye kisses and suitcases packed with bittersweet missed opportunities. Too many I'm sorry and not enough coming throughs or I'll be there for you. So there's not enough left here for you to take. There's not enough curves that would replace the hollow that was carved out of me. So if you want to stay, you better know. You can sleep there if it makes you feel less shallow, but you're laying in a grave dug deep of hostility. These I love you's feel like numbing captivity. You being here makes no difference to me. I leave that side of the bed for the lonely side of me. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 hey, well, I with the way you. she spit, the I way she like, spit, I would love to hear her and the first feature with his beatbox and put a piece together. Oh my God, it would be amazing, right? These two artists are just phenomenal and they've really crafted and honed what they do. Anyways, sorry, I told myself, like, I don't have 20 minutes, all my stuff is bad. I don't know if many of y'all know who Snow the product is, but that's who you remind me of. Um, so I'm going to okay. I'm going to have maybe two or three. Yes! There we go! Let's go! Um, okay. I'm fire. I burn like ash marks the cedar. I'm your huckleberry, come see me, let it linger. I see it in your eyes when you get mesmerized, but your words are like sirens blaring through your compliments. Red flickers in my mind, thunder crashes, warning signs, and I breathe in the summons like air when it's warm. I like the shivers of chaos before the storm. You see the glow when you obsess over what you think is beautiful, but it's the fire that torches my soul. If I were you, I would take it slow because I'm a glutton for your pain. And I like when you confuse fantasy for the game. I'm a succubus. You misconstrue your intelligence for lust. You get high on your infatuation. Your selfish motives fuel your hallucinations. I'm a scorpion who knows how to act coy. The poison paralyzes when you treat me like a toy. And with every heartbreak that shatters your arrogance, I exhale liberation without repent. I know your imagination savors my scent. I thought I had the capability to wrap you in serenity. I wanted to hold your fears and serve you consolation. You abused and smothered the embers I savored for my rectification. So now I meet your desires and I satisfy your cravings. I play pretty and I know that there's no happy endings. I feel heat to hands that have gone cold. I listen because I know you like it when I do what I'm told. But my intentions are clear. I'm here to take your motherfucking soul. You better go in, damn it. Woo, woo, woo. Damn. Sorry, I didn't know. That <laughs> <laughs> damn. Yes. Take a brother's yes. soul. Yeah. 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 yeah, I got two more. This one isn't about taking people's souls. <laughs> um, okay. It flashes in my brain and gives me a panic attack and tells me I needed to live. I've got a million reasons to let it go, but there's this thing that rings in my ears telling me I need it so. 
I take a drag, take a hit, let myself slip just a little bit. Tell myself it'll all get better. Tell myself one day I'll be stronger. I won't turn into the woman like my mother. I won't be like that lady that you see in the street, holding the sign, smiling, no teeth. I live in my brain, but my mind keeps slipping. Only the clock keeps ticking. Only time keeps healing. And I look at the clock and I wonder why it's only been five minutes. I bring myself back to guilt, live in shame, so I don't want to go back again, try to find the reasons, try to listen to my heart beating and be grateful. Wish I could appreciate the body God gave me. Why would I sacrifice my youth for a craving? Why would I allow myself to deprecate when others would only wish to be born in my state? Why can't I live like I did as a kid? Learn, run, laugh, play without consequences. Where did my smile go? Where did my sanity go? I don't remember having so many thoughts in my head as a child. You tell yourself you're stronger. You tell yourself you deserve better. You tell yourself people love you, people love you. Why can't you love yourself? And yet somehow I would trade it all in for something I regret, so I fight every day. I fight every day and I don't pray because I don't want God to know that I've abused the body he gave me. So one minute goes by, one minute goes by and the clock keeps ticking. So one day it will just be a memory and I hope it doesn't come back to haunt me. One day I won't say I have to have it. Hi, I'm Amber and I'm an addict. Wow. Wow. Fire, fire, fire. I shared it to you. Where go? Where go? Okay, I, I have one more. <laughs> this one I have to do with a with a rhythm. Uh so I did it to the We Will Rock You rhythm. If you want to play, you can play and clap with it. It's up to you. That's that's what I went off of to write this one. And and if you unmute your mic, don't mess up my clap. <laughs> Okay. I don't want to be a woman in this world. Dick pics, rim, cherry lipstick, be like superwoman, but a little bit more. Apparently there's a competition where there's no women winning. Maybe I'm just dumb pretending. This shit's got me second guessing who's to blame for women's pain. Cause I see it in the magazines every single day. You're fighting for women's rights. Oh, so you say, but it's you who poses for the pictures, allows them to crop and Photoshop and add filters. It's you who posts on Instagram. So a man gives a damn. It's you who sells all the Maplelina, a touch of anti-aging cream, a little bit of weight loss cream, a glorified pregnant teen i don't want to be a woman in this world when did it start i'm a bitch or a whore because i want to explore because i don't want to sit around and sue on time wasting on you but that's not lady like tell a dude to take a hike be more independent why are you so condescending come on girl stop pretending maybe i'm just being messing that's why i'm so mad i'm guessing i don't want to be a woman in this world you ain't got it tough girl till you got a rough girl chest always so puff girl just can't do enough girl better make it like you spend it be a mama and look sexy get a tummy tuck damn you look rough just one more layer of foundation one more miracle mascara fake and everything to keep on taking till i feel completely torn act like a lady but be my whore and then they ask why don't you smile more i don't want to be a woman in this world stand up be strong you don't need a man make it on your own you can do anything but stop being everything god you're so intimidating damn you always think you're right why you always start a fight maybe i'm just tired of being everything to keep believing telling me who to be and i don't want to be a woman in this world because i'm objectified i'm here for you to erectify and god forbid if i age because hey wrinkles really don't get laid so we pay for needles in my face so i erase every trace that had fighting to be me no i'm not fucking free i'm prison to every single juxtaposition everything that's been written or seen on your tv screens every condescending comment every woman that prolongs it every time you tell me to be something more you can't tell me there's not a fucking war i don't want to be a woman in this world yeah. And that's it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Woo. Bring it. Oh, I need you to come do that on my 
IG show. Uh, <laughs> that piece is amazing. Like I will pay you to come do it. Um, but it's it's so important. You know, we started this platform with women, myself and Madukes, and uh, we started the press with women, really pushing up women, supporting women, living on women, and look at all these beautiful women in our, our community. We've had the opportunity to meet. I remember I'm with. Uh, Kellen in her house in Phoenix and then you know with Poe Khan like like she's a real person like I can pinch her she's real you guys we're real, we're real. um it's it's, it's mind-blowing right and so to <laughs> to hear Amber Jergala just spit her truth y'all yes, yes. come on y'all if we wonderful were, were you not entertained and like she's now 15 minutes and stuff. I was like, whatever. I'm gonna I didn't see that. Delete like she didn't never see it. Uh I knew I was hoping I was like, yeah, there, there we go. We had a great time. Um, if we were in a cafe or this was a live open mic and you didn't pay a ticket to this, you would be the luckiest person all year long. Uh, and so you didn't pay for tickets. So please, please, please tip these poets, uh, even if it's a couple bucks. And don't think like, oh my god, I can't, I can't cash up um Amber drug all the three dollars. That's like so cheap no just do it because if everyone would just send her three dollars it would be fine and you would have no shame and she would get paid very well uh so, so please that if you're not sure how to get access to any of that you can also find it at the word is right except um amber where can we cash up you paypal you venmo i didn't add it because i don't want it oh that's right that that's right amber so where in lieu of okay so in lieu of tips Miss Amber, what would you like people to be doing? I, I, I had, I don't know if there, if anyone wants to support something and they want to throw that out there, I, um, I, I didn't want to take anything, uh, but okay. Got- so, so pour it in, pour it back into your community. Um, you're, you're such a lovely person. Like, I just, I'm, I'm, word girl is still here. Like, I'm like, I'm so glad. I was like, I hope he needs to see this woman. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, you gotta- I, didn't, I didn't want to leave, man. Like, I just, all of these, all of these poets were just so awesome. And, um, like, I'm really tired. It's nearly 3 a.m., but I just, uh, you know, it's just wicked. It's just so good being part of this. So, and Amber, that was, that was on point. Loved it. So that's why I'm still here. You guys should do a collab. Do a coll- If you guys do a collab, that would be so fun. Um, what I want to do at the end of every year, maybe like the last Saturday of the year, as long as it's not like New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, because everyone's still way too hungover at the end of New Year's Day. As long as it's not the very last Saturday, I want to do a showcase. Any of the features who featured throughout the year can come and sign up to read in in one feature show. And that would be amazing if you guys did uh, works on a a collab or something like, come on. He could have totally done some beatboxing during that last poem for you. I was like, I "I only have the clap. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah, whatever we can do to promote you all. Amber, where can people find you, follow you, all that good stuff on social media? Yeah, I'll put it down. I am terrible though, like my, my Facebook is my real estate and my IG is nonsense and I don't post poetry. Okay. So I'm just, not a good example. So I wasn't sure if I should post it. But no, I'll do okay. better. Please, please, please go find her. Amber, do you have a book out yet? No, I, it has been 10 years, but I was domesticated for six of that and I didn't come out and I just started coming oh, back out. So you don't have a... Okay, well, so just let me know because um, I've, I've got a huge lineup of incredible poets to publish next year, which of, who, of course include our very own Doc Gianni in the room, who's a poet laureate. Uh, so he'll be he'll be on our publishing launch for 2022. If you have a book, you're considering doing a book for this. Oh my God, uh, just just let me know. Um, let just you know, have your people call my people. It'll be fun too. Oh my God, we don't want to Right this. Uh, let me just say let me just say this amber make sure amber make sure you look at the chat because uh we've been blowing up the chat we've been listening but i want you to make sure that you don't miss any of the wonderful things that we've been saying you were amazing thoroughly enjoyed your work but make sure you read the chat okay before you leave tonight (laughs) at least the chat yeah for for sure (laughs) 
I, it was ahead. amazing. Yeah, the last piece is absolutely on point and it's actually very valid for our life right now. So um, I appreciate you more than you know. Um, maybe I'll close tonight with a poem for women, just for, not, not just for Amber, but for all of the ladies tonight. We have two, uh, sorry, we have three people left to go. Uh, we're gonna bring Dane Ince up, then we have Urban Cowboy Poet, and we'll, fin uh, we'll finish with Doc Janning, and then I will close tonight with, uh, well, act yeah, that's fine, as long as it's a short poem, Doc. Uh, and then I'll close tonight, uh, since we are running now close to two hours, so. Dane, are you ready? And yeah. I have to tell you, the 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 erotic open mic that we're doing, Sean and I are doing, uh, Boyd Candy. Wait, 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 hold on. So somebody needs to mute, so so you can. Uh... Who's, hey, who's, hello. Oh, probably MD oh. like has a game on or something. I'm like, wait, oh. who's talking? Um, I like this show tonight too. Okay. Okay, and he got it. The Chromebook is a little different. It doesn't put unmuted people at the top. It keeps everyone in alphabetical order. So that's really, I'm learning the Chromebook. Okay. Um, anyways, so yes, the erotic open mic that uh, Poe Khan and I are doing, not this coming Monday, but the next, because this coming Monday we have Cafe Generalissimo. Uh, so, uh, and that might work. Word drill, that would be a perfect time for you because it's early after, it, it's, it's early evening, like late afternoon here, which would probably be a better time uh, time set for you. But anyways, Dane Ince, who's uh, gonna be the reader next, he is the inaugural feature for our inaugural erotic open mic. Please welcome him up, Dane Ince! Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, I will be reaching out to Amber and World I have plans, <laughs> and and hopefully you, you guys will will take it. But let me get into this. I have uh, three poems. They're kind of older things, and they're not that long. And uh, a couple of them are A poems. They start with the letter A, and one of the poems is uh, is, uh, is is sort of a, a negative space um, piece in honor of, of someone's trip to the Grand Canyon. It's called Ants. Every tube of paint I own is some fucked up shade of black. I grab a tube of alizarin crimson, squeeze some black. Cadmium yellow, same deal. Even the titanium white is a very attractive, glossy, shiny, B-A-L-C-K, black. Midnight mine shaft roof or collapse. I stab the canvas with cobalt blue. The rope of color oozes, runs, drips. The rainbow color wheel of blue, black, and gray. Adjacent color harmony, hallelujah, success. The pearls around the neck shine. The bright sparkle of raven eye black. Drink a beer. Eat a pastrami sandwich, everything tastes exactly like brick. Who can win? Puppy or 18 wheeler semi truck? Who do you like? Sounds like the morning line favorite at the eighth at Aqueduct. The mind plays tricks with you. Dull, gray, dumb dreams, sappy, some time, some place long ago, picture past a kid smiling with water wings on, innocent, swimming in an ocean of effluent misery. The family of open wounds goes on summer vacation. The travel trailer infested with worms, ants, and bitey, bitey spiders, scorpions, and ants. The, Gan the Grand Canyon, boarded up, closed, out of luck. Haven't you ever seen a fucking hole? Avocado chant. What I did on my summer vacation. Woke up, drank coffee, watched CNN, watched Cats, ate banana, wrote a Trump sketch. I made a fresh pot of coffee, watched the comedy special, entered my daily futile protest on Twitter. On Facebook, sent unwanted poems, was invited to read on Sunday, entered my feudal daily protest on Facebook, replied to emails, contemplated attachment thinking. I used to wonder, now I know I've lived long enough through enough stuff to know the answer, it's just me. No one is coming to the rescue. Contemplated mindfulness. My idea of it, 
or theirs. What's the purpose of skin? If it's not for cuts, just a bag to hold the blood and guts in, listen to tango music, pet it tally as she demands. Sorry, I lost my place. Petted Callie as she demands, replied to my late wife's sister, thanking her for the flower, sobbed deeply, fully, completely, loudly for as long as sobs needed to be released and for what seemed like forever, but was probably a minute and 12 seconds tops. Felt better, watch cats sleep, watch cats snuggle, watch cats go crazy over fresh birthday flowers for my late Karen. Wondered what to make for breakfast. Grated Costco cheese to fill a gallon bag full. Just rewrote that last line. A blend of cheddar, Gruyere, Bavarian, Emmentaler. Wondered if everything is dwelling in the past. Can I write a poem right now in this moment and still be present? Just reread this thing several times. Wondered why Microsoft knows how to spell Bavarian but thinks Emmentaler should be a mantle. Look up a mantle. Hmm. The word you entered isn't in the dictionary. Click the spelling uh, suggested below or try using the search bar above. Oh, no, no, no. No trying. No, no trying. Just do. Thank you, Star Wars. Automatic writing. Get ready to read us at a Zoom event. Think about reading at another Zoom event. A Zoom event. Look up the word. Gestalt. Tango music playing. Cats sleeping. I sigh. I put on pants. Make bacon. Eat bacon. Think about pigs. It sucks to be a pig. Slice an avocado into, remove the seed, fill each half of the avocado with mild salsa. Eat the avocado. I just wrote this now so that I can see the word avocado in my mind. Repeat it again and again. It's an avocado chant. Unemployed hangman's lament. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry, I hope I may be forgiven. Uh, it's just in my white privilege, Eurocentrically propagandized, teeny tiny sexist male pea brain. I could not bring myself to type job challenge to hang persons with men. The executions would continue, but we ran out of rope. Goddamn pandemic. If at first you fail to succeed, then try giving up. If that doesn't work, ah, fuck it. If you want to pick a fight that you're sure to lose, pick one with gravity. That'll fix your wagon. Remember, it takes three people to fuck shit up. You must ask four times to get what you really want. The more impatient you are, the longer this will take. Be careful if you get your dream. Be careful if you get what you dream for. Bottle blondes do not make good precedents. Eventually, everyone steps in dog poop. Eventually, everyone steps in dog poop. No, 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 that's nonsense. It's a far left radical Democrat hoax cooked up to make me look bad. There is no dog poo, no dog poo at all. Months later, there is still no rope. Oh my God, Dane. Oh my God, that's Dean Ince, everybody. Oh, that was man. dope, Dane. Dope. Yeah. Brilliant. I, I, you just put their brains back together, I think, but like really fucked up. Um, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, took off their head, blew their head off, and Amber scrambled all that stuff up. You like just reorganized it. Uh, it but it's, it's, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. All right. Come back. Come back next Monday night. Uh, Dane Ince will be here featuring, but it'll be an erotic open mic, y'all. So you got to like lick something like your pen. All right. Um, uh, so I think it would be a great idea if we take two poems from the features the week before. Oh, yeah. And, I, and, and, make, and it make it erotic. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So Amber, send me your uh, send me one of your poems from tonight or a couple of your poems from tonight, and I'll uh, I will cover it on Monday um, as I. You wanted twist. the lonely side of me. Hmm. You wanted the lonely side of me. Oh. Uh, the no. one you wanted. The lo Oh, oh, the. Yeah, okay, good. Um. Yes. Uh, the <laughs> 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 I'm like. Do 
do I want to see the lonely? I was like, wait, this could go one of two ways and we're live right now. Um, so um, send me a couple of, uh, I'll pick one of them uh, to, to do. Wow, I'm embarrassed. All right, um, Urban Cowboy Oh my God, you are next. And um, after UCP, we will have Doc. I see MD Live is in the building. Do you, so I, I closed the list, but my friend, you're here. If you would like on the list, and I love your background, by the way. Um, I will put you on the list. Um, we'll keep it like four minutes, you know, guys, for this, like, don't, no super long monologue. All right, UCP. Oh, did he leave already? Ah, he let, he must have just, he must have just clicked out. All right, so we are going to go to Doc and then MD Live. I'll finish up with the poem tonight and our, our regular toast. So I'll have to go get my phone. Are you ready, Doc? I have a poem and uh, it's not an erotic poem, far from it. Its title is A Lifetime and a Life. Within a river, an ocean of tears, tears dammed inside lies a lifetime and a life. A lifetime of pain, fear, and rage. A loss, angst, and heroic, and broken dreams, of want and need, of turmoil, mental, physical, and psycho-emotional, of walking with death, of existentialism, questions within questions, questions without answers, a life of challenges and responsibilities, of dancing with love, sometimes too, sometimes away, of visions of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, of exploring the inexplicable, of words and learning, Within two hopes and dreams, in lasting storms, I sail those tears. Tears never cried, and I remember days, too many days, days I'll never forget. Thank you. Oh, Doc. I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to read your book, my friend. I can't wait to publish your book. I'm excited. I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, I've always been. And it's kind of like you're a poet laureate. So um, <laughs> <there's> that. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you, my friend. All right. MD Live is in the building. MD Live is going to be doing the Thursdays um, that are uh, switching off with Lou and Lonnie. So Thursdays at Word is Right is Thinking Through Thursdays. We're super excited to be offering it. It's a mental health forward open mic every Thursday night. Uh, the first and third are, I believe, Lonnie and Blue. So anyways, Lonnie and Blue have one and then MD Live will have one and then they'll toggle back and forth. Uh, so please welcome him up. He'll finish us up on the open mic. I will read a final poem for, for Amber. And uh, and we'll bid adieu this evening. All right. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Um, I did um, episodes one through three earlier this week. So if you heard them, uh, it ended with me blaming God and my wife for my daughter's passing. And so it's going to pick up from there. Um, and I'm doing episode four, five, and six. They're pretty short episodes. Um, episode four, I couldn't take the pain any longer. I jumped in my car and sped off into the darkness of the night, realizing that I'll never see my baby again. After several miles, I pulled over and grabbed two things out of the trunk. One was a bottle of booze. The other, my gun. My mind was spinning. My phone was ringing, and the only thing I was thinking as I turned the bottle up was 
I wanted to die too. Episode five. As I took the last sip from the bottle, I took the gun in my hand and put the barrel in my mouth. I tried to pull the, pull the trigger, but the safety was on. As I sat there crying, my vision shone my light. Before this little girl came into my life, which was spiraling out of control at that time. The bottle of liquor had been in my trunk since my daughter was five. And I promised her I'd never take another drink. But now, look at me. What am I doing? My daughter wouldn't like this side of me. But I can't continue without her. So as I put the gun to my temple, it's time for me to go to sleep. I may be a drunk because my hands, because I may be drunk because my hand seems so heavy. I can't lift the gun. Episode six. Your hand is heavy as your heart, my friend. Who said that? Where are you? Don't worry, someone special sent me to help you. Put down the gun and I'll reveal myself to you. Who are you? Where are you? I must be really drunk because I'm talking to myself. But why can't I place this gun in my mouth and let freedom ring? You can't because our father is holding your hand and no man is stronger than he is. In peace, the next week. Oh my God. Oh, if you guys have not been listening to this story that he gives us like a new chapter every week. Oh my God. Like MD Live has the, the and it, it just, fuck me. It pulls at my heartstrings, man. I, if any of, oh man. Shattered, I'm shattered. Oh, if, if any of you are in that dark place where you're considering taking action or even thinking about it, make sure please that you know you have people you can reach out to. You matter. You know, tomorrow will come. Uh, we're here to talk all the time, no matter what. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is also available. Um, reach out, reach out poets when you get to that dark space. Damn, MD, man, oh man. It's good to see you. Did you, like I can actually see you, see you. Did you get a computer or something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> magical, um, right? You get a computer, you yeah. Oh, it. That background that you see, that's uh -huh. actually um, a painting my daughter did of me. Oh my god, I love it, and it's just superimposed. I love. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a painting my daughter did of me, and I had wrote a poem to it. So, what we're doing is her paintings. Once she give them a name. I write a poem to that painting uh -huh. with the same name. And we're combining all of her um, artwork, her drawings and everything into a book with my poetry. I That's love beautiful. It. I love that. Yeah. It's incredibly beautiful. We should definitely look at, at something to do. Um, I'm thinking kind of like how photo books are really long, uh, maybe like 11 by 11 by eight. Uh, and then you have the, the photo and the poem side by side on each page, but yep. we'd have to definitely look into some of that stuff. It's it's exciting, y'all. MD Live's got a lot of things coming down the pipe. Uh, oh, this... so please support him and get me when you're ready to start your show. Oh yeah. We that would get yeah. you going. I'm definitely um, getting things together. As you see, I, I got my little studio area set up. I got multiple cameras in here. so. It's, it's ready to go. We just need to put some final details in here. And uh, I'm working out something with my with two of my cousins and awesome. my nephew. One plays um, the organ for his church. One plays the drums. And the other one plays guitar. So we're working on something to put the poetry to the music. So we oh can bring it to the show. That. Let's go. Yes, and you can hit up Domo Beth because she does the music for it open mics on Sundays. Okay. Um, and so I'm sure she can, you know, I don't know if you need any musicians yeah. to talk or whatever. 
Uh, there's a lot of people who do music on this platform. So we, yeah, just communicate with each other, use each other for sure. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna close this out because Amber Dragala is here tonight. Uh, I'm gonna close this out with a, um, a poem. This is my anthem to women. Please, please, please remember, um, I wasn't here because of the, um, um, I, we were just late getting in. And thank you, Nick, again for, for taking over. Uh, just so everyone knows, next Saturday night, uh, we are having Diane Ward and Ashley Edwards. I'm so excited for them. We're publishing Ashley's book. Uh, she's a slam poet from Virginia. Her book will be coming out this December with the next 10 at Red or Green Books, so you don't want to miss them. And Diane Ward was here for the large chunk of the show tonight. Uh, so if you want to actually hear her read for a large chunk of time, you should just be here because uh, when Diane Ward reads one poem, everyone's like, do another. And you'll be able to get that opportunity if you get your ass here next Saturday. We have a cash slam the first Saturday of October. Uh, then October 9th, we have Mary Blenderman and Sam Park are going to be here. Holy Oh my God. Uh, yeah, if you have not met either Sam Park or Mary Blenderman, th those two women are incredible firehouses of just um, from the heart. Heart. It's the hard work of heart work, the work those ladies do that. And then October 16th, we have uh, um, uh, Daniel Viegas and Edith Blackbird from Mexico. Uh, that'll be a bilingual open mic. It's freaking fabulous. So please keep coming and supporting. There are a lot of new shows coming up and definitely come and hit it with us at the Erotic Open Mic in two weeks. All right, uh, here is the exit poem for tonight. It is titled, Be Steel, My Heart. Those of you who have heard it already, yay. Those of you who have not, awesome. Be Steel, My Heart. This is for the women who fall in love with poets. This is for the women who pay the tab because we are saints on first dates. This is for the women who can't explain away they're gay or why they need dick and pussy. This is for the squirters, the dildo lovers, and the do me all nighters. This is for the women who let the bad kissers down easy. This is for the women who take naked pictures of themselves, even though they don't feel pretty enough. This is for the women who say, I'm sorry, way too much. This is for the women who wait and wait and wait on love. This is for the women who get the, it's, it's not you, it's me. This is for the women who fall hard and fast and don't ever get enough sex. This is for the women who want to quit because they are tired of feeling their heart break. This is for the women who are afraid to cry because they may not stop. This is for you. This is for the women with grit and diplomas from the school of hard knocks. This is for the women who put it all out there and get very little in return, who love disapproving, who love penniless writers with disapproving families amidst a racist society. This is for the women who chase paper as much as their dreams. This is for the women who love their pens more than your mind or your dick. This is for you. This is for the women who teach lovers how to touch, how to fuck, how to make love, who feel the need to convince them to spend time with her, to fuck her, to love her. This is for the single moms counting change at the grocery store counter who see disappointment on a man's face when he hears she has kids. This is for you. This is for the women who say no, who stand up in revolt from the regular regulation of what fits between her legs. This is the woman, this is for the women who read old love poems from old lovers who just couldn't handle them. This is for the women who bust their asses, pay the bills to make his dreams come true. This is for the women who've been told they need a boss, a real man to take care of them. Well, I'm done waiting and I'm done teaching. I'm done loving mediocre boys to men with no end to the lesson plans in sight. I'm done. 
I'm done falling in love for no reason, with no equal, with no partner and only lazy lovers. I'm done making his dreams come true. And I'm done searching for a boss because I am a motherfucking boss. These are for the boss women named Amber, named La Bruja, Roz, Ray Jane, Jane Spoken Word, Gigi, Miro, Catherine, Terry, Lonnie, Lizzie, Emily, Amanda, Domo, Luciana, Mary, Maria, Monica, Marilee, Khan, and Kemlin. This is for you. This is for the women who believe in the sisterhood, who believe women, who champion women, who fiercely protect our sacred space. This is for you. So if there's a man or woman out there who wants to step up, show up, show out, I'm ready. Just know. You better be a motherfucking boss too. Fuck me. But don't fuck me over. Let's go. And Paul. Woo! Thank you, Marissa. I loved <laughs> it. Yes, Terry Rose. I know. I it's I love that poem. Um, it just I feel like I keep adding to it because it's there's so many incredible people who are influencing <laughs> this poem. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. I, I haven't looked at the chat because <clears throat> it was distracting. So, oh, Nancy's here. Awesome. Um, yes, she wants to hear more from you. I love it. This is should be recorded live on the Facebook feed. If not, there will be a recording of it I can send to you. Please, please, please tonight, remember, be generous, dip into your pockets. Let's uh, except for Amber, she wants you to pour back into your community, please. Uh, but definitely, let's get going. If you've never featured, you want to come feature at Word is Right, please let me know. Don't wait for the invitation because my list is too long. And if you've never published a book of poetry, please let me know. Red or green books.com. Red is R E A D. Red or green books.com. Here, watch. I'll drop it in the chat. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Midnight got a nice plug there. Um, uh, red or green books. Com is the website red R E A D, and uh, you can see the 20 poets who are launching this year it is amazing please come and buy their work all of the books that sell this year will go towards making more books uh, so we're not taking any profit this year at all it is going to be an amazing amazing thing all right time for the toast we're coming down to the end of our evening do y'all have something to toast with all right. Uh, hopefully, we'll. See. If I don't see you Sunday at Domo Beth, uh, I'll see you Monday for Cafe Generalissimo. All right. Here we go, everyone. First of all, thank you so much to Amber Dragala. Thank you so much, Word Gorilla, Two R's, Two L's, uh, for being here tonight. This it was memorable. I do hope that you share the live with people. That you let these artists get some get some spread um, on their work. Let's let's fucking go. All right. Here we go. Here's my toast. Here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, our features. Thank you, audience. Thank you, poets. I'll see you all at Word is Right next time. Bye. Bye.